Hey friends, today I want to share with you some of my tips and tricks on designing and planting a beautiful garden on a slope. It can be quite a problem for a lot of people. Here at Creekside Nursery, we kind of jokingly say that nothing is flat here at Creekside, but honestly, it really is true. So we have lots of gardens that are planted on slopes. We are here at the garden center and we have this beautiful flower bed behind me that has a nice wide variety of proven winners, shrubs and perennials in it. At the house, we call um, one of my favorite beds is the cottage garden. This cottage garden is mostly perennials, and then I will also supplement with annuals during the summer months. So between these two areas, I think I have successfully mastered on how to plant a slope so that you have a beautiful garden with lots of interest and lots of colors that invite um, all sorts of beneficial insects and those sweet garden critters that we love to have in our garden to come visit us. A couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you are designing a garden for a slope. One, don't overthink it, really. It is not as hard as I think we make it out to be. Essentially, you can plan a slope the exact same way that you plan any of your other gardens, even if they were perfectly flat. You're gonna wanna consider your sunlight. Is it a full sun bed? Does it get six hours of sun or more a day? Is it more of a shade bed? Does it get five or four to five hours or less of sun a day? That is going to really determine your plant selection. So know your sun. Typically on slopes, at the top of the slope, it is going to be drier. At the bottom of the slope, it is going to be more damp. Simple gravity, right? When it rains or the irrigation turns on, the water is going to go down that hill. So maybe put more drought tolerant or plants that like drier conditions at the top of the slope. And then you can put plants that enjoy more damp conditions at the bottom. So here on this bed, we have some of the jazz hands laura petalums at the top. These are notoriously tough shrubs that can handle drier conditions. Down at the bottom, I have Scentlandia. Scentlandia loves wet conditions. It loves those bog-like conditions, and it will actually spread more quickly. And so that when you're looking at a slope, oftentimes that is a good thing because you've got lots of great extensive roots. Then what you're really gonna think about is like your design. When you're thinking of as far as like your height, right? Because we want to think about, we want to put, tend to want to put lower plants in the front and work our way up to taller plants in the back. When you have a slope, and it will depend on the angle of your slope, this is a pretty severe slope right here. You could have plants that are really the same mature height, and because they are on a slope, they're naturally going to look like they are different heights. So, just like always, low things go on the front, tall things go on the back. But even if like all of your shrubs and perennials are in that three foot mark, because they are on an elevation slope, they're really gonna look like they are different heights. So just kind of keep that in mind. Don't overthink the height thing too much. Don't think, oh my gosh, I have all the plants are gonna be the exact same um, mature height. Not necessarily so because they are on this slope. Also thinking wide, right? Plants that go out, that takes up more room. That means less weeding for you and less mulch. Abelias, we absolutely love abelias here in North Carolina. The Trace Amigos would be a great one to use here because it goes out and it takes up lots of great room. Another thing is that when you're on a slope, you want to plant it quite, quite heavily. We did this flower bed installation in two phases. In the fall, we put in all of the shrubs. So that was our Laura Petalums. That was our Panicle Hydrangeas. That was our um, Scentlandias, right? And then coming back that next spring, what we did is we installed all of the perennials. So we have a ton of beautiful Proven Winners perennials in here. We have a lot of different kinds of Monarda because I am a huge fan of color. So I want color pops everywhere. So we have the Monarda. We also have lots of the Rainbow Rhythm series of Daylilies. Daylilies are great for a slope because just like with other perennials, their mounds and their root systems get bigger each year. The more plants like these gorgeous daylilies that you have on a slope, 
the more roots you're going to have, the less wash is going to happen. Those roots will hold in your soil. And then my final tip for you is when planting on a slope is choose a great high quality hardwood mulch that is not going to wash. A double hammered mulch would be great and we like to put it on thick two to three inches because when the rains come it will hold on there and it will not wash down um, maybe like some other kinds of mulches that are very as I call slick and slippery so put that nice mulch on there and that will really hold it in I hope this has been helpful I hope it has been informative and some inspiration for you this is a great time of the year to be planning and thinking and dreaming of your garden for next year. A lot of us sometimes can't get out in the garden because of the weather or if you're covered in snow or it's just chilly, you're, maybe your garden center is closed. Go ahead and begin planning. Look at different magazines and idea boards. Proven Winners has lots of great idea boards for whether you have a sun garden or a shade garden. Check those out so that you can get lots of inspiration and begin planning the perfect slope for your garden. As always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.